Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we shall be looking at monetary policies. Now, monetary policies are very crucial in influencing the overall economic environment and conditions. This video will be focused on the various types of monetary policies, the aims and objectives of monetary policies, and who is responsible for carrying out a monetary policy. So without wasting any time further, let's get started. So when we talk about monetary policy, it refers to the actions or policies implemented or undertaken mainly to govern the money supply and the interest rates or the level of interest rates in a given economy. Generally, the monetary policy is used by the central bank of a country. For example, it is the Federal Reserve in the US, Bank of England in UK and the Reserve Bank of India in India. Monetary policy could be of two types. One is the expansionary monetary policy and the other one is a contractionary monetary policy. We shall take a look at each of them later in this video. So let us quickly take a look at what are the objectives of monetary policy. The first objective here is to maintain low and stable inflation or in simple terms we could say maintaining price stability. So central banks generally have this main agenda of keeping price um, of maintaining price stability by keeping inflation within the target range. It is uh, generally between 2 to 3 percent. This targeted low and stable inflation could help households and businesses to plan for future um, without uh, any disruptions that are caused by price fluctuations. Another objective of a monetary policy would be low levels of unemployment. We can say that the aim of the central bank is to ensure that there is always uh, a sustainable employment level prevalent in the economy and for that monetary policy could be used to exert uh, or influence economic conditions in such a manner that could prevent excessive unemployment in the labor market or any labor market imbalances. So central bank would aim to foster sustainable economic growth that is balanced and may not lead to inflationary or deflationary uh, conditions within the economy. And central bank has several tools up its sleeve that it can use to foster long-term economic growth. Another objective of central bank could be to reduce the fluctuations in business cycles specifically by influencing key economic variables like interest rate, money supply and the overall economic activity. The agenda would be to stabilize economy and mitigate the impact of economic downturns and expansions. Another objective would be to achieve a balance between export revenue and the import expenditures incurred by an economy through maintaining the value of the national currency. This would involve avoiding excessive depreciation or appreciation that could turn out to be super disruptive as far as international trade is concerned. Now let us take a look at an expansionary monetary policy. So an expansionary monetary policy is implemented during an economic slowdown or more specifically during a recessionary time phase. The main agenda here is to increase the aggregate demand. So once the expansionary policy is implemented, this is how the aggregate demand would be impacted. Now, all the students who are from Indian boards, as in uh, from HSC or CBSC or ISC, please pay close attention that this diagram has average price level over here, okay, on the y-axis. So given this diagram where the average price level is measured on the y-axis and real GDP on the x-axis, a rightward shift in the aggregate demand indicates that aggregate demand has increased. The moment an increase in aggregate demand is registered, we see that the price level has gone up from P to P1 and the quantity produced and supplied in this economy has also gone up from Q to Q1. So we can see that as the expansionary monetary policy is implemented, the impact on the average price level is a rise and the real GDP has also increased. So as far as the benefits are concerned, we know that the output has gone up, which means the productivity has gone up and 
this will lead to an economic growth in that particular economy. However, on the flip side, we see that the price has also gone up, which may lead to inflationary pressures in the economy. There is a time lag always in this particular segment because it may take time for central bank to analyze that there is uh, a slowdown uh, triggering in the economy, then the policy to be implemented and the results from that policy to show up. So there's a time lag between observing and the results. So that could be another flaw because by then the slowdown could have been even more severe. Generally, in an expansionary policy, the rate of interests are reduced, but this policy would become useless if the rate of interests are at their all-time lows. Reducing interest rates beyond that minimum level would not be possible. So in that case, uh, implementing an expansionary policy would become futile. Even if the rate of interest in this particular policy is reduced, uh, the effect of low expenditures would again dampen the consumer and business confidence, specifically when the economy is in a very deep recession. All right, so these are the flaws that you would see under an expansionary monetary policy. So contractionary monetary policy is the exact opposite of expansionary monetary policy and this policy is implemented when the economy is very much heated or when the economy is facing an inflationary situation. The main aim of implementing this policy is to bring down the aggregate demand. So when a contractionary policy is implemented, we see that the aggregate demand is shifting towards the left from AD to AD1. And with that, we see that the price level is falling and the quantity or the real GDP is also reducing from Q to Q1. So as far as the benefits are concerned, we do see that the prices are going down, thereby contributing to a higher standard of living for the people, a more stabilized price situations in the, in the economy. But on the flip side, if we see, since the prices are going down, that means there are lower profits for the businesses and producers, because of which there would be high unemployments since we see that there is a reduction in the overall GDP in the economy. Due to lower profits, the businesses may not have enough funds to invest into research and development or innovation. So there'll be lower investments in the economy. The debt burden would rise as the rate of interest tends to rise in a contractionary monetary policy and it may fall heavily upon those households and businesses who are already reeling with debt so debt servicing would become more difficult for those households and businesses. And a raise in the rate of interest would negatively impact the housing markets because people will not be able to buy homes anymore since the rate of interest is very high and they may not be able to cater to the debt servicing that comes after taking the debt. Students, if you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, the moment I say subscribe, the subscribe button would glow. And if you feel that that glow is good, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Yeah. And I shall see you in my next video. Bye now. Take care.